So you finally got organized using Zoho to run your business with apps like CRM to create proposals, sign to generate contracts and books for invoicing. So why are you still using email to do all your customer communication? We know how that goes. Proposals routed to spam, files too large to attach and invoices getting buried. Not to mention the difficulty searching through thousands of mixed threads. It's time to give clients an easy way to do business with you using ZPortals, the customer portal builder for Zoho. ZPortals allows you to efficiently coordinate with your customers. It's the bridge that connects information stored in Zoho directly to your customers through an easy to navigate portal installed right on your website. With secure connections to multiple Zoho apps, your customers can feel confident uploading sensitive files or reviewing private data in a dashboard. From filling out forms to accepting quotes and managing support tickets, ZPortals is the one-stop shop for customers to self-service saving everyone time and frustration. So do your team and customers a favor, install Z Portals today. There it is, Z Portals in a nutshell. I am Brett Martin <laughs> from Zanat Consulting and with me is John Mark Bantock, the CEO of Z Portals. And we did this a year ago, John Mark. Uh, we kind of did a whole thing on Z Portals. Since then you've made over 75 improvements to it, major improvements uh, to the app. And I thought it'd be a great idea to have you back. But now that I've seen the video, I think the webinar is over and we can just uh, call it right here. I covered the whole thing. Or is there more? <laughs> Certainly more, Brett. Uh, thanks so much for having me back on. Uh, pleasure to uh, chat with you again. And yeah, uh, it's been a tremendous year of development over at Z Portals. Uh, as you said, we've added more than 75 new features, improved on another 80 features that were already there. Uh, we're seeing some uh, tremendous adoption and some really interesting use cases. And I'm really excited to, to share what uh, you can do with Z Portals these days. Well, I've been excited. You know, everybody asks us, what do we do for a portal? And it's always just Z Portals, Z Portals, Z Portals. And it's just gotten so much better. When we were chatting the other day, it was like, wow, let's just get back on and go through this. Now, we're going to do everybody a favor. We're not going to make you go watch last year's video. Um, we're going to actually kind of cover a complete overview of Z portals to start this thing off. John Mark is then going to kind of take us through some demos that are drastically upgraded from last year, kind of point out some of the key features in those uh, portal demos that we go through. But I think, you know, the ones you've chosen are going to be a great representation of basically everything that Z portals can do. Yeah, you, you said it right, Brett. Uh, you know, there's so much that we can go over. We've kind of handpicked a few different scenarios and hopefully we'll be able to uh, cover some key highlights here. Um, but uh, there'll certainly be opportunities to uh, do some follow-ups uh, as well. Fantastic. All right, with that, um, I think you've got a kind of a PowerPoint. You're going to kind of run us through the key features of Z Portals, and uh, let's just get started, jump right into it. Fantastic. Well, Brett, I'd like to get started with the, the reason we created Z Portals in the first place. Um, you know, we we all know that uh, Zoho One is uh, kind of taking the uh, industry by storm here. Most folks who are using Zoho are adopting Zoho One, implementing multiple apps, and we now need a unified portal uh, to to leverage all of these apps to coordinate with our customers, affiliates, vendors. Uh, even third-party stakeholders more efficiently. So at its core, Z Portals is a unified portal builder for Zoho. We now connect to more than 10 different Zoho apps, allowing you to create a, a unified experience for that customer to do everything in one place from uh, onboarding forms to updating account information, paying invoices, uploading docs, you know, signing contracts, su submitting support tickets, you, you name it. It's really that one-stop shop for everything that a customer would need to do to interact with you. Now, I think it's uh, uh, worthwhile to touch on the, the fact that Z Portals is more than just a customer portal. Um, of course, uh, customers are the main uh, stakeholder group that uses Z Portals, and really the the biggest benefits that you, the organization, and a customer can get out of Z Portals is far more efficient, secure, and professional coordination. Now, I rattled off a handful of use cases from those onboarding forms and support tickets, secure document transfers, et cetera. 
it really just allows uh, customers to self-service and uh, be able to be very efficient in their coordination with uh, your organization. Now, Z Portals is very flexible. Um, you can deploy it not only for customers, but also for affiliates and sales teams. So we have a lot of uh, customers using Z Portals for uh, affiliate marketing, where they'll provide a portal for their affiliates to access uh, collateral, submit leads, track those deals from the leads that they submitted, uh, view commission reports, uh, et cetera. Um, other stakeholders that use this are vendors, whether you're using Z portals to assign work orders, let them upload bills, um, maybe provide secure access to, to sensitive information uh, through Vault, for example. Uh, and then, of course, we're seeing some really interesting uh, service providers that are actually leveraging Z portals as a, a service platform, where if you're a brokerage service and you need to connect providers with clients, and maybe you are managing these two groups and you need to be able to connect a mortgage broker with a uh, someone seeking a mortgage in a particular area, we can now facilitate that connection through the portal and let them coordinate uh, together. Or if uh, you are a financial advisor and you need to be able to uh, uh, look in and, and view a portfolio of clients that may be working with one of your uh, insurance providers, the insurance provider could use Z portals, giving access to an advisor who can see their portfolio of clients that they're collaborating on together. And then uh, another interesting uh, feature that we've brought out in the last year are public directories. So if you now keep a lot of information stored in CRM, uh, whether it's a product directory or a list of resources or providers, you can now actually display uh, those resources publicly on a website, uh, letting them filter, even integrate uh, Google Maps to see these records uh, online. So a lot uh, can be done and, and really, um, Depending on your use case, there are a lot of different reasons as to why you'd want a portal. I think the main one, as I've said, is is allowing for far more efficiency. That users can self-service, really uh, resulting in less support time for you guys internally. Uh, it leads to efficient collaboration, which obviously uh, tends to have a higher customer satisfaction. As increased security and professionalism, making sure that you're not emailing things back and forth and, and hunting through you know tons of threads to find the right documents or action items that you're supposed to do. And then, of course, by sending clients back to a portal, you're increasing your web traffic, your brand awareness, and, and overall goodwill with the stakeholders that you're working with. So... Um, you know, as we mentioned, there's been a tremendous amount of development over the last year with more than 75 new features added. Uh, some of the key highlights here, uh, we have uh, support for subforms now within the portal, uh, as well as related lists. Uh, this can be quite powerful when combined with our profiles. So uh, you can now govern uh, user access to the portal by profile, much like you would in the CRM. And you can give different profiles access to different dashboards or different menu options and content in the portal. And um, uh, another one is uh, a big category of improvement is workflow automation. We've uh, enabled the ability to add custom buttons throughout the portal. These buttons can trigger web hooks or custom functions. Um, they can uh, allow users to accept or approve things through the, the portal that can then trigger orders to be created or invoices to, to be sent out. And uh, uh, these can be either held for approval or trigger blueprints internally for your team to process. Um, of course, on the support side, um, you know, we're doing a lot with communication and uh, um, uh, accounting as well. We're seeing some very innovative uh, use cases in the nonprofit industry, leveraging uh, subscription management to do recurring giving. Um, uh, of course, on the support side, we've got some slick integrations with the ASAP uh, or ASAP widget, and you can now you know, view full knowledge bases and community forums within the portal as well. So some really um, interesting uh, use cases, especially when you combine now the ability to have single sign-on with WordPress. And Brett, that just opens up a huge uh, opportunity for e-commerce integrations with WooCommerce and uh, integrating other services within this portal outside of just Zoho. Yeah, there's so much here. And I wanted to point out, if it's not clear, oftentimes people will say, oh, but there's a portal for the CRM. 
and there's a portal for projects, and there's a portal for this, and there's a portal for that. Um, but each one of those requires a separate login, and they're not integrated. You don't see them all on the same page. So, you know, from a customer satisfaction and a customer ease of use, by pulling all of these applications into one portal, and you know what you've done is you you made it so that a lot of that functionality that was you really couldn't do inside the CRM with the buttons and the other things that are out here, really making this almost a standalone CRM that people are able to access with and, and kind of do those things. I mean, uh, quite a bit of functionality added in there this year. But I think the key thing is, again, pulling all of it in. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you're going to cover it or not, but, you know, Zola subscriptions, really great application, fantastic. You've got a portal, you can log in. But what you guys are able to do with Zoho subscriptions from prorations and all the other things that can be handled through the portal, which you couldn't handle really otherwise, there's just so much to that that, that kind of ties into this as well. So you're not only bringing things together, but in many cases, you're adding functionality that's just completely missing from a Zoho native portal. Yeah, exactly. I think that the unification of all the portals is obviously uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, what Z Portal covers. But we've also added in a lot of the uh, kind of bells and whistles and customization to put that polish on a portal that really makes it user friendly. And uh, being able to dial it into your use case, you know, the, the fact that you can have a different label in a customer facing menu than you have in the CRM is huge. You know, you don't want to call deals, you know, deals in the portal for the customer, you may want to call it engagements. You know, you you may want to have that flexibility to have a more friendly user-facing name. The, the color scheme and overall look and feel of the portal should be native to your website. The customer shouldn't feel like they're going to a third-party portal. And, and that's really what we're endeavoring to do here is uh, Z Portals is being leveraged almost as this mini website builder that can interact or pull data from Zoho and, and display it in a very user-friendly and customizable way, depending on your use case. Yeah. And this is a WordPress plugin, uh, really lightweight, kind of sits in there. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't have WordPress. I'm using something else. It doesn't really matter. You can spin up a separate WordPress site, go ahead and do the plugin, and it can seamlessly integrate with your existing website, kind of going back and forth between the two as well. Um, super light, you know, su super fast. And do you feel sometimes it's better to spin it up on its own separate WordPress server, or does it just play as well equally? Yeah, that's a great question. And yeah, for those of uh, uh, the customers that are already using WordPress, obviously very easy to just install the plugin on your native uh, site. Uh, those who want to segregate the portal from their main site, even if they use WordPress, or if you don't use WordPress, what we typically recommend is just installing WordPress on a subdomain of your main uh, URL. And then you can just add a link from your main website to the subdomain. Uh, we can help customize that look and feel so that uh, it's seamless between the main site and the subdomain. And there are some advantages to having the portal on a separate subdomain, especially if you a firm that has thousands of users and it's going to get a lot of traffic. It's typically nice to be able to uh, have a dedicated you know, virtual private server or hosting specifically for the portal to keep it nice and snappy. Um, so, uh, yeah, depending on your uh, security permissions, your, your use, um, uh, what kind of stakeholders are going to the portal, we have actually a lot of customers that deploy multiple portals, uh, one for uh, different types of customers, or uh, they may have an affiliate portal as well as a customer portal. And therefore, you may want to have a partners.yoururl.com or you know app.yoururl, and you can have it be a little bit more specific to that user group that's logging in. All right. Well, I think the best way for us to experience this, uh, John Mark, is for you to show us some demos of the product. So why don't we just jump right into that? Okay. Fantastic. So um, what we've done to help uh, you guys get a better sense of how Z portals can be used is we've put together a series of example portals. So uh, I do encourage you all to come here and check out these different use cases. You can actually uh, click on any of these tabs and uh, when you do so, it'll take you to a little demo site that we've put together. And uh, if you go ahead and click on the login page, there's some example credentials here where you can browse that particular uh, use case. So I, I, I picked a, a couple here that I wanted to chat about and maybe highlight some of the new features that we have. 
Um, for those uh, uh, organizations that want to provide a single sign-on for their customers, uh, not only to access multiple apps, but oftentimes you have a user that is a part of multiple organizations. And you not only want them to be able to access all the information within one organization, but not have to change logins to jump between organizations. This can happen if you have parent-child relationships between a, a national uh, company and a local subsidiary, or in this case, where you have a CPA firm. And you know, in my little example here with Nick Fury, uh, he may be working with a CPA firm on his individual taxes, but may also be a, a corporate representative and that CPA firm doing the business taxes. So Z Portals allows for a single sign-on where that user can jump between different accounts that they may be affiliated with. And uh, if I switch to here, Dark Trees, uh, this user can have the whole por portal filter down on information that's just relevant to Stark Industries. And uh, uh, this provides a lot of flexibility where you can not only give access in a parent-child hierarchy, but also to various accounts. If uh, a particular individual is on a non-profit board and a corporate entity and has a personal account, one login can get them access to everything. So uh, one of the first things that I wanted to touch on is the ability to now integrate subforms into the uh, CRM uh, and the portal. Uh, this can lead to some interesting use cases, um, and the one I'm going to highlight here is for CPA firms or mortgage brokers would probably have the same use case, where typically you need to request a number of documents from uh, a client to upload to the portal. Now, we all hopefully pay our taxes and know how painful that process can be, where we uh, are usually given a secure portal to do the upload, but very rarely do we have a nice consolidated list of all the documents we need to provide and a status of whether we've provided them or not. And uh, this little uh, use case, I think, solves just that, where we can have a tax prep uh, module in the CRM. The account manager or the CPA can create a tax prep record for a particular year for a client, and they can have a subform requesting the various documents that that person needs to upload to the portal. And uh, through the portal, then, the client can upload files and drag and drop them directly over here. It'll add it to the attachment section in the CRM record. And then they can go through and update the status in the portal. So if they're not able to upload all of them in one sitting, they can come back in here and uh, keep track of which ones they still need to upload. Keep this as pending. And then once uh, everything is uploaded, they can go through and click a button now uh, in the portal to actually submit them through to uh, their accountant. And you can do some really interesting things with buttons. Uh, in this particular use case, uh, what we've had some CPA firms do is actually move all of the attachments from that tax prep record into a work drive folder, which ends up being the working folder for the tax prep team to actually prepare the taxes. And we use that same button to trigger an email alert to the account manager running this particular uh, uh, tax uh, uh, prep for this client, letting them know that all of the documents are ready. That way, once again, the client knows exactly which documents they need to upload. The CPA isn't constantly checking to make sure that everything has been submitted. And hopefully it makes the whole process that much easier and secure. So um, custom buttons can be used in uh, a number of ways. Um, not only can you use them on a, uh, an approval or submission like this, but we can also put them in line uh, with uh, records in the portal. And I'm gonna s jump over here to uh, another example where uh, oftentimes we work with uh, brokerage firms or suppliers and uh, they may have let's take a, a medical uh, equipment distribution company they may work with different doctor's offices and those offices need to uh, place recurring orders uh, with their supplier and there's probably a, a typical cadence that uh, they need gloves on a monthly basis but maybe syringes on a quarterly basis so through the portal, we can now give the client the ability to create order templates on different frequencies. And within that uh, order template over here, 
We can give uh, either the account manager can work with the client to establish, you know, the frequency and the the products that that client needs to order. You can then uh, use a, a scheduled action in the CRM to automatically kick off an order on a particular date and frequency. And Brett, I know you guys have done some tremendous automation in Zoho with schedules and and custom functions to trigger recurring actions. This could be a perfect example of that where uh, a pending order record could get created from an order template and we can now give the customer the ability to uh, either automatically approve it or maybe go in and make some adjustments on the fly. Yeah, I mean, super, super slick. A question on these templates, John Mark. Um, When a person is going ahead and setting up their portal for the first time, are you giving them templates to choose from to kind of get it going or is this just kind of build it on your own kind of thing? Yeah, gl- glad you brought that up. So uh, Z Portals actually comes with six or now seven different themes uh, out of the box. So when you first go to connect your different apps to the portal, uh, you can choose which Zoho apps are connected. Uh, it'll automatically make available all of the modules and fields uh, from each uh, app that you connect. And you basically just turn it on. And uh, as you turn it on, it gets added to the menu. Uh, with the theme that you selected and you can choose to rename different uh, modules you can choose which fields are made available uh, to the client and uh, what permissions they may have you know some users may have view only access while a manager may have you know edit permissions or delete permissions so in this use case here with a template yeah you may want to give the uh you know, procurement manager, the ability to actually create the templates and edit them. But then there may be another person uh, who's more operational that needs to actually be the one approving the pending orders once that template gets kicked off into that next order. So you can have different user groups that may be able to see different tabs. So that manager may have access to the order templates, but the local, you know, uh, uh, person processing the orders may not. And uh, some may be able to edit and others just have view access. So we'll have complete flexibility over what tabs the user has access to and what they can do with the information there as well. Very nice. Um, Didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, very. Uh, it's kind of important. I mean, just to see the progress that's been made, the, the permissions, the templating, everything, the, the integration with the... the deeper integration with each of the Zoho apps. Uh, impressive stuff, buddy. Thanks, man. And and I think that that's an approach that we've taken. I know that a lot of you guys are waiting for new integrations, uh, some deeper integrations to uh, different apps. And, and the approach that we've taken is to really go very deep in the integrations that we have before we go wide. And uh, for those of you who have been in the Zoho ecosystem a while, you know how it's basically an impossible feat to keep up with uh, Zoho's uh, addition of new apps and features. We want to pick a handful of the the apps and features that are uh, the most important and make sure that they work incredibly well and slick. And we now have users that are yeah have thousands of daily users interacting with the portal. It's it's super solid and can support uh, what it does incredibly well. And we want to do that first and make sure that everything works before we go wide. But I do have some exciting news that we we will be uh, integrating Zoho projects very soon in a very robust way. Um, and uh, uh, there's some other exciting developments coming to our um, uh, subscription options, making available an unlimited plan at a far more affordable and scalable uh, price point as well. Fantastic. You're right. You know, Zoho has so many changes that happen on a weekly basis. You could almost have a podcast about it, you know, where you just kind of cover it. <laughs> you know, that's a great idea, Brett. Um, what would I call it? CRS Dento <laughs> would be good. All right. I'll let you carry on. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, the, to, to kind of speak to the, the level of depth and flexibility that we're getting with some of these features, you know, custom buttons were added, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, uh, probably in mid-2022. Uh, and uh, just in this last update, we've pushed the ability to create inline buttons now as well. So here's an example where, you know, we, we have that uh, order template that kicked off a pending order uh, record in the CRM. 
And you know, through that, we can send an email to the customer saying, you know, here's your, your monthly order, you know, go ahead and approve this. Or if you'd like to log into the portal, you can make adjustments or approve as well. So here the user can come in and uh, we can actually embed an inline button with different icons directly in the list view. So from here, they can just hit approve and uh, uh, go ahead and process the order. Uh, or they can dive into the details of that order and then depending on their permissions, they'd have an edit button over here where they could make adjustments to the quantities or the products that they wanted, and then go ahead and, and once again, hit approve. So from a workflow standpoint, we are uh, allowing for a lot more process management and uh, streamlined user actions. Now, when the user approves this, the portal now supports the activation of blueprints or internal approval processes. So uh, we can either have the system automatically push this through as a sales order in inventory, or we can have it trigger a blueprint or an approval process for a manager internally to you know, do a final review and then process that order. So a lot of different use cases there with um, uh, these custom buttons and, and subforms. Uh, and uh, you, know, you can use your imagination or, or browse some of our other portal options to take a look at those use cases. So I'd like to switch gears here and, and, and touch on a couple of other things. Um, this is another demo that we have for a, a coaching client. Um, so if you are an organization that provides any kind of resources, coaching, or gated materials to a, uh, a stakeholder group or, or client base, uh, the, the portal could be a very effective option to make those gated resources available. So um, if you use Zoho subscriptions, you could have a customer subscribe to a plan. You could then uh, trigger an account change, uh, an account status change in the CRM that can then make available certain tabs over here in the portal. So for example, you may want to give everyone the ability to view a course catalog, and you can now display your courses in a nice gallery view where uh, they can perhaps browse those courses. You know, from within that course, perhaps you want to you know, be able to show them or share with them what the lesson plans are going to be or the curriculum. And then, of course, you could add a little button to start subscription or to request a quote or to purchase it. And from that button, you can create a deal or actually create the subscription. And then once that subscription is made live, the account type can change. And this is a really slick uh, integration now with the CRM where you can actually use actions that are happening in any Zoho product to change the profile, the role. You can automatically invite people to the portal or deactivate them when their subscription lapses and then give them access to the tabs that they need. So perhaps it's a resource tab and you want to uh, provide some materials or, or videos or training to clients through the portal and only make that available to those that are invited or subscribe to you, etc. And then, of course, you can display those here, maybe embed some videos uh, or have links to uh, download you know, those materials. Now, I can't remember which of these records I had it on, um, but we have the ability to actually now build more dynamic pages in Z portals. Uh, and what I mean by that is you don't just have to display information from the CRM in a, a more traditional grid format like this. Um, let's go over here to a little widget example and we'll take a look at the product directory. Um, you can actually embed elements within the detail page of a particular record as well. So if I look at this MacBook and I want to have a gallery slider of uh, images of that product over here, I can actually embed this gallery slider now in that detail page. And then, of course, pull in any information from the product record in the CRM. And maybe you want to attach a spec sheet over here you know, for that particular product. So these embedded elements uh, can be very powerful because it's not just limited to our uh, images over here. You can do things like have uh, video embeds, and I'll jump over here to this dashboard for a nonprofit example. You can have uh, uh, videos embedded, you can have text blocks, we can pull in 
uh, dashboards from Zoho Analytics or it, really any other iframe. And by the way, with the single sign-on capabilities now with WordPress, you could actually iframe in another whole site directly within the portal and have a single sign-on to create that seamless experience. So um, these elements over here, anything from buttons to text blocks to videos to images, uh, can now actually be embedded on any page within the portal. Uh, so maybe you want to provide instructions on your uh, support side <clears throat> or have a, a video to introduce something or give instruction. We now have uh, that flexibility uh, as well. So um, uh, speaking of uh, you know this nonprofit vertical, um, uh, an interesting uh, use case here is to you know, display your different funds or initiatives, allow clients to, or I should say donors in this case, to to make a one-time donation and perhaps see that history of the donations that they've made for tax purposes. You can pull a whole payment statement directly from Zoho Books. We can have them manage their recurring gifts through Zoho subscriptions. Um, or, you know, if you want to be able to assign a client uh you know, uh, or donor certain responsibilities in preparation for an event that they may be contributing to, we can now do all of that in one place. So again, lots of different use cases for some of these new features that we've added. Very nice. So basically Zoho Books, just pull the invoices directly to them, show their giving. They can make a donation directly on here as well. And I take it, is that automatically going to create the invoice and uh, go through the payment gateway, all of that? Just uh, exactly. very, very slick. Very slick. Yeah. With ZPortals being a WordPress plugin, you can now leverage the single sign-on capabilities and the, the full flexibility and power of WordPress, one of the largest CMS platforms uh, out there. So you can actually embed WordPress pages now directly in the ZPortals portal. You can also have your full robust e-commerce experience powered by WooCommerce and integrate all of those orders into the portal. So there's some great connectors out there that you can push orders from WooCommerce into Zoho Inventory for fulfillment. And of course, those completed orders would show up in the portal where they can you know, track them and, and view that history of purchases. So this ability for the portal to have the single sign-on with WordPress and other sites and being able to embed other services directly in the portal via iframe and have the single sign-on really creates for a far more robust portal experience that can uh, extend beyond just Zoho data and into other services as well. Fantastic. So, John Mark, are there any other major features you want to hit on? Brett, there, there's of course so much to go over, but what I want to do, perhaps quickly do, is for those uh, of you who haven't seen um, all of the core features that are available in Z portals, let me just quickly run through you know, what you can typically embed within a portal, and then we can just touch on a, a list of some of the uh, key updates here over the last year. And, uh, uh, you know, we can dive into some of those use cases at a high level. But uh, overall within the portal, you know, Z portals now integrates with more than 10 different uh, apps. So you can do everything from allowing a company to build out their profile, their points of contact. We can display proposals in the portal for them to accept uh, or provide feedback on. Uh, we could have uh, scheduled meetings and events that we can give the, the customer an agenda so they know how to prepare for that upcoming meeting and access the meeting URL through the portal. Um, speaking of that, we can now include um, you know, your Acuity, your Calendly, your Zoho bookings links directly in the dashboard. So if you're logging in and you want to check your account manager's uh, uh, contact details, we can have the account manager's info here with their scheduling link as you know one of the quick access tabs. Um, uh, we can uh, also assign clients tasks, give them the ability to view and accept uh, quotes, the sales orders, uh, manage retainer payments and uh, payment history. Again, through Zoho subscriptions, you can display the subscriptions, manage your subscriptions, change your credit card on the subscriptions. A lot of the the things that you'd expect to do through any kind of uh, you know customer website or, or web app, you can now do through Z portals. 
when it comes to document management, of course, we have a great integration with uh, Zoho WorkDrive. So if you use the WorkDrive extension for the CRM, a customer folder will get automatically created in WorkDrive and that client can upload files here, um, manage files within uh, the, the WorkDrive folder. Uh, they're going to be able to create their own subdirectories now as well. Um, Brett, I know that you guys do this quite often when it comes to automating um, workflows within Zoho, but we see this as well on the Z portal side where uh, you can actually create a template folder in WorkDrive. And when that client gets onboarded, we can automatically load in a standardized subdirectory of folders and resources for that customer uh, so that you can keep things well organized and give them some direction. And are you automating that process here? So the uh, um, the WorkDrive integration with Z portals works alongside that CRM integration. Uh, the uh, population of the sub for or the sub directories and folders within that client, uh, we certainly have well standardized, so we can easily deploy that just as Zanata yep. can. Um, but uh, you know that's typically done. Uh, it's a fairly unique folder structure and resources that you'd want to deploy. So work with your your Zoho partner to get that implemented. Um, you know, the in this day and age, security is is huge, and uh, uh, I think that Zoho Vault is one of the more underutilized uh, products in the the Zoho ecosystem. And we've done a pretty robust integration with Zoho Vault, so you can actually embed the password manager in the portal, and uh, through that, you can give uh, the ability for your customers to share logins or sensitive information. Of course, everything in Z portals is encrypted in transit. Nothing's actually stored in the portal. Everything is served up in real time. Now, uh, one ad additional feature that we added was an audit log. So for some of uh, you guys who want to keep track of what changes your customers are making uh, to Zoho data or requesting through approval processes, you can now have them make a change in the portal, hold it for approval, and then have an audit log saved in the uh, portal on specific fields. So you'll be given the flexibility to uh, just store the data that you want if you need that audit uh, uh, track as well. Um, when it comes to Zoho Sign, you can uh, view uh, your sign docs in the portal, and uh, uh, very soon you'll be able to actually initiate the signatures from within the portal as well. Of course, with Zoho Support, as I mentioned, you can not only embed the support tickets, file new tickets, keep track with the, the thread, but now with the ASAP uh, widget, uh, embed your knowledge base in your community forums directly in the portal as well. Um, the same goes for you know the online chat features. And uh, uh, you, you'll probably notice behind my image over here, we have a little chat uh, embed uh, that's uh, uh, showing up and users can now chat with support or through sales IQ on this portal as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, finally, other things that I wanted to touch on here is uh, we we have uh, a lot of flexibility when it comes to uh, the embed of surveys, Zoho forms, and doing some creative things with customer onboarding or just customer satisfaction in general. So now when you log into the portal, you can pop up surveys and ask how your customers are, uh, what they think of the portal. Of course, on the back end of Z portals, you get a full dashboard to understand how users are interacting with the portal. Are they interacting with more of the finance suite and paying invoices? Or are they using the portal to you know, um, manage their order templates? We'll actually get some insight now as to what your customers are going to the portal for. And again, one of the biggest advantages of Z portals is being able to uh, save everyone uh, time and, and frustration in that coordination. And uh, we're seeing that at scale, this is saving hours of support time per day where clients can just go to the portal to self-service and you know stop that frustration of having dozens of emails a day and, and searching through mixed threads that uh, it's impossible to find what you want. Yeah, and I just want to touch back on uh, so many so many great things here about Zoho Pass, um, Zoho Password, Zoho Vault, which you've got down here as passwords. So you're saying as a client, I could log in here and actually share passwords. I could say, hey, here's my password for this. 
and go ahead and add it yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. Let me see if in this demo account I have the password manager set up. Um, this was this. It it's so right powerful. Now. You know, it's unfortunate, but as Zoho partners, we can't really use Zoho Vault, which is a great app because we're constantly logging into other people's instances of Zoho and you have to log out of your instance of Zoho and then you lose Zoho Vault. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, we had to accomplish this exact same thing using an AWS server and writing to it and then writing to 1Password and doing all of that because we can't use Zoho Vault. And by the way, we love Zoho Vault. The only reason is what I just explained there. But um, that ability to have just that, just for clients to be able to lock in, log in, give you a password to something you need to look at, do it securely, do it encrypted, do it directly to Zoho Vault is just, uh, I can't tell, it's so powerful. Exactly. And, and we'll have the flexibility on the back end um, in the, the Z portals uh, dashboard here to invite a particular user or company to a specific chamber. And we can give them access to the subdirectory under that chamber. And then we can see here a specific password. And of course, this is all encrypted you know, in, in transit. And uh, we can give the user the ability to edit or manage or delete those passwords again in a very secure way. So uh, there's going to be no more of, of emailing or trying to coordinate to get those passwords securely. And from a company standpoint, um, you now can put the onus on the customer to manage what access your firm has to their systems. So as a professional service provider, yeah, I know what, what we've done in the past to doing professional services is every quarter, we just go through and clear out our password manager for any client secrets that we don't have as an active customer because we don't want the liability of our employees having access to you know passwords yep. that we don't need anymore but now that owners can be put on the, the client where they can now self-manage what access is given and be able to update it when you know you, you have to make those changes it's very very nice so what are some of the key features you guys have added this year yeah, so you know, I'm just looking at a, a little list here, and I think what I'll do is just kind of rattle down this list, and and we can maybe pause on, on some of these with uh, um, uh, that are more relevant. But you know, the, the related lists were a big one. Being able to show uh, and add records from a related list, being able to govern which profiles can see certain related lists. Um, we have the ability to just make a lot more aesthetic changes to the portal so new themes are available of course we still have the custom css and javascript available uh, where you can change your your brand names and your logos and and color schemes uh, in a very flexible way um, subforms were a big one uh, the ability to reorder uh, columns in your list views a big focus this year was on mobile optimization uh, so having the flexibility with some of those uh, buttons and uh, columns has made the mobile use uh, much more user-friendly. A big one is that we added multi-language uh, support. So if your CRM is in another language, we pull that language file uh, into the portal. You can then combine that with a local translate feature within uh, WordPress to allow users to switch languages. So. Uh, we've seen a big uptick in Z portals being used globally and by uh, jurisdictions where you're required to have uh, a certain language supported, like in Canada. Um, or are you using the translation function inside Zoho to pull that file there? So uh, you'll have to forgive me. I have, that's a question best uh, asked to our, our VP of tech. Um, but we, oh. I know we are pulling those uh, specific um uh, field names directly from uh, the CRM. And uh, okay. so, yeah. Um, you know, again, with uh, um, aesthetics, uh, we now have full width fields, the ability to have those different elements uh, embedded within the page. Um, we uh, uh, have a lot more flexibility on our own e commerce uh, um, integration. So, while most users who have e-commerce sites need a pretty robust uh, deployment through WooCommerce, we actually have our own e-commerce capabilities directly integrated with Zoho Inventory. So that can be really great if you have a fairly simple e-commerce use case and you want to be able to let users you know, build a shopping cart, check out, and automatically process the sales order, have the invoice created there with the payment reconciliation, 
everything that we want and expect out of a true e-commerce integration. Uh, for those of you that run those e-commerce sites, you know that it can be a little uh, trying to get all of your sales orders, invoices, payment reconciliations lined up at the customer level. Typically, you have to do it at the account level, not necessarily at the customer level. So we can uh, uh, show all of that through our own integration. Um, let's see, we have, uh, uh, once again, a lot of work for automation with approvals and blueprint triggers. We've added the ability to create a vendor-based portal. So you can now have uh, the way that users get access to different data in Z portals is essentially through how records are linked in the CRM. So you can have a contact-based portal. If you are a B2C company, business to consumer, you only want that user to be able to see records related to the contact. But if you are a business to business uh, organization, you may want that user to see any records related to their company. Same thing, if you are a vendor, you want to be able to show any records just related to the vendor record. So we have a lot more flexibility when it comes to what data is shared to that logged in user. Um, That's a huge improvement over basic CRM portal. I mean, the ability to, to, to filter it that way and show it is, is uh, quite impressive. Yeah. And, and, you know, when it comes to the filtering options, you know, we can choose to now uh, not only show data just related to a particular person or account, but you could then also choose to show data with belonging to that account within a certain status. So a good one is if you want to show a product directory, you only want to show your active products in the portal. You can now um, actually only show records based on a certain view in the CRM. Or you could use Z portals to create your own filters on the fly. Or maybe you have a very large group of contacts that you are managing in the portal and you want that group of contacts to be pre-filtered um, to only show you know, those that are in your team. Uh, now we can actually preload the page with a, a preset filter. You know, one of the big enhancements last year was the ability to load thousands of records into the portal at one time, whereas we were previously limited to a 200 record pagination. Now you can load, you know, a thousand products or a thousand contacts or orders and then pre-filter that by those just in the last 30 days, for example. So that ability to, to load thousands of records but pre-filter it so it's still very fast is, is a big one. Um, uh, we, we now have more robust ability to add custom fields on the sign-up. So we have a lot of organizations that are actually bringing in contacts or leads through the portal and they're having them sign up for the service uh, through the Z portal sign up so that they get automatic access to the portal and then that you know contact pushed into the CRM or that account created. Again, with a lot of flexibility around either automatic approvals or uh, based off of um, uh, you know, social approval processes. So if you have a list of users, we've seen this where we may have a contract with an organization, they give us a list of uh, uh, pre-approved people who can sign up for the portal. We load them in as contacts, we pre-approve them, and then we send out an invite where they can now sign up for the portal. And because they're already registered as a pre-approved contact, they'll get automatic access to the portal. Whereas if they're not, it'll be held for an approval for an admin to, you know, gate and, and let in. Super um, nice. So, uh, yeah, predefined filters, let's see. So managing permissions from the CRM, I kind of uh, alluded to this with that Zoho subscriptions example, where you can now govern what access a user has in the CRM and affect what they can see in the portal. Um, that's what that goes for you. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that those are, are probably the big ones. I mean, we have a slew of things that are That's available um, on the on the site. I mean, <laughs> everything from users being able to actually download data from the portal in CSV, um, adding the meetings module. Uh, we got uh, section elements, uh, the survey integration. Um, I mean, uh, you know, we, we could be here all day, not to mention all on and on the on. optimizations that we've done to the core product itself. So uh, I certainly encourage fantastic. you all to. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say fantastic job. It goes on and on. So the zportals.com, easy to find, right? 
And has the yep. pricing changed at all? Is it still $49 for that intro price and going up or where are we at? Yeah, so, so today we still have our three subscriptions um, starting at $49 uh, a month. And uh, we're going to be making some exciting announcements here um, in the near future to consolidate pricing and uh, make a, a universal unlimited plan uh, available. Uh, you know, we, we're rolling out and we're continuing to roll out a host of new features. And what we are seeing is that it'll be so much more beneficial to just give everyone access to unlimited API calls. So as we roll out some of these big, new, exciting features, um, moving to a universal unlimited plan is, is going to be the direction that we are, are heading here. Fantastic. Fantastic. John Mark, thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate you joining us. If I've said it once, I will say it again and it's the thousandth time. If you have Zoho and you use Zoho and you need a portal for your clients, Z Portals is the place to go. So uh, check it out. We'll probably have you back next year with another 500 changes. Gosh, only knows. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I really appreciate your time and thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot, Brett. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Hey guys, uh, if you want to try out uh, Z Portals, be sure to click the link below for free trial. And as always, if you want to reach out to us, you can just head over to Zanata.com and click on drop us a line. And don't forget about our resource library where you're over at Zanata, just click on resources. That's where we keep all of our videos, all of our tutorials, everything is there. Subscribe to our newsletter. Check out our online community, Club Zanata at club.zanata.com. It is growing daily. It is extremely active. And you can drop a question in there. And if you drop a question, we're going to answer it on our brand new show called Azaz. Ask Zanata anything about Zoho. That drops every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And don't forget the CRM Zen show every Friday morning at 10 a.m. And that is live. If you want to train your team? Check out our team training over at Sonata.com slash training. Thank you so everybody so much for joining us, John Marks. Thank you again, and we'll see everybody soon.